everybody it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today we are going to be making some really fun candles using these colorful sprinkles. I always get asked how to actually use these and how to actually make them and then of course we need some Mod Podge and we need our basic candle. So this is a really big candle and then we have the smaller one. You do want them in a, a clear jar. When I say small this one here is still 400 grams. Now to actually make those what we need to do is make um, a bit of a grid for the candle. So here you can see I've actually made a grid and I'm going to show you how to actually make that uh, because when I first started I used to get very confused how to actually do this and I will show you. So now we're going to work on the big one first because this one I already know that I'm just going to put two candles in it. I have tested this as well everyone so I know it does work. So now basically we're just going to draw around the outside of the jar, just roughly, you know, because this is going to sit underneath. So now we will take this off and we're finished with that one. And now we need to just cut around the circle. So let's just cut around. And there's no main science with this because this is not going inside the jar and I'll show you exactly what I mean after when we start making it and I know it's not a perfect circle but that doesn't matter and you know it just needs to be the outside of your jar so um, now so we have done that so now we've got our circle here so now what we're going to do is fold the circle in half so just like that then open it up fold it the other way in half now you probably can't see but there is like a little hopefully you can see there's a little cross in the middle so now what I do to help myself is I just rule over the cross just roughly and it's just going to help us remember where we're putting everything so now we have the cross here in the middle so we know the first candle is going to go in the center um, and the reason for this is I have actually tested it quite a bit. So my medium sized candles, which I'll find you a jar and show you. So say it's a jar like this. If you pretend to put one jar here, we'll get another jar, put it here and so on. Then we know that's going to be five to go to the edge. And of course you need to test. So we'll put those ones away. So now what we're going to do is get our circle and we're going to get the edge of the circle and fold it into the middle circle. Now, if you can kind of see this slight line, um, we're going to do this to every single side. So just keep folding them in so that we've got a line. Uh, we don't need to draw anything on this. And I will show you how easy it is and you'll be surprised. So now if you can see those lines, so what we're going to do is put a little dot on each line in the center of this line and this line and that's where our wick's going. So we will just put it in the middle, in the middle here, in the middle here and now we have done it. So now you know that's where the five wicks are going. So all we're going to do now and I've already done another one which I did with bigger circles so we could see before this. So this is my uh, circle. So basically we're just going to put the circle down. Then we are going to put the jar on top and I'll move the camera so you can see. Now can you see those um, circles in the middle and then we know to put the wick straight on that. So basically we have our wick stickers. We're going to put the wick on that but before I do all of this uh, we will get back to that in a minute. We need to do the, the um, you know the sprinkles around the outside so that is where this particular product Mod Podge comes in this is actually similar to a PVA for children it's non-toxic um, and you know look you are going to have heat get to the edge but it's not going to be like super hot on the edge so um, I burnt many of these and have no issues with it at all and I have made many of these. I did do another video quite some time ago, but people wanted a more, uh, you know, video of how to actually put the wicks in and so on. And this time we're going to make two big ones um, rather than some little ones. Now I do have just a plastic little container here. So I'm just going to pour some Mod Podge in this because we need that. Now this is literally all we're going to do. We'll do that one in a moment. So we've got 
this one here so before we put the wicks and they all get in the way we're literally just going to get the Mod Podge and paint around the outside now remember not to paint in the middle because we need the wick to go in there so you can go up as far on the jar as you want I actually don't like to go to the edge because I like the jar to look white at the edge because um, I think if the top of it is white it just looks a bit nicer with sprinkles further down so I'll show you what I mean with this one so let's just keep painting it so you can see in here we've painted it if you can see it's gone up that far in the jar you can make it be a beautiful pattern I personally just like to do it this way then what we're going to do is just pour in the sprinkles and literally you're just going to do this without hopefully spilling them out like I just did and just go around hold your hand at the bottom so they don't come out once we've gone around the jar we're just going to tip them back into here you can use them for the next one and can you see look how gorgeous they look now we do need to let this dry for about 12 hours so let this dry till it's not white on the outside so like I said I'm going to set this aside just leave it there and um, we'll just let that dry now the next thing we're going to do is do this big one so it's basically the same process there's no difference um you know just go around the edge however you want to go around so if you want to you know if you want to just align at the edge i mean you could literally just do this i'm using a sponge kind of uh, brush use whatever brush you like it really doesn't matter um, as long as it gets the job done and I'm just doing it the way I like it but you might have a different way that you like it um, don't put heaps on as well to try and be a bit sparing like you can see that's how much I've got on this little spongy brush because we don't need heaps on this and now I've gone up as far as I want so once again just get the sprinkles pour them all in and remember no ones to eat these these are only for you know making the candle look pretty and i'm going to show you how i'm going to put some little um pretty decorations on it later so now if you can see we have decorated that so once the white comes up to the top it will look really gorgeous um and so like i said once again we're just going to pour it in here which may be a bit harder with a wider jar so we're just going to pour it back in there so i can make another one later but basically that's our two jars so make sure you get everything out we don't want anything sitting in the bottom so now we have done that bit let's set these aside and you can wash off your sponge brush as well and dry it out so you can use it at another time now if you get any oil in a distance that you don't want them to be on like if there was an extra bit there just you can just pick that off of course you can let this dry um, but I'm just going to wipe any sprinkles from the inside tip any out and now we have our jar here so like I said we're literally going to just get this that we already made pop it under the jar so now I've got the jar so that you can see it nice and easy and now what we're going to do is put the wicks in and we can see the holes where the wicks going to sit Now the only thing that is a bit more tricky is trying to get something to hold the wicks up uh, so you know you can use a kebab stick or anything but I'll show you that later so we can see where the holes are so we're literally going to be putting them over so now we are using a 7.5 uh, AS uh, wick and this one is from Aussie Candle Supplies you can also get um, a 7.5 um, and that is from Pure Candle Supplies so it depends on where you've got them but I already had some here from Aussie Candles so I'm going to just pop these in and I know that these ones work I have actually tested it so now let's just pop that there and as I said you know later on we are going to put our kebab stick over here to hold them all in place or a ruler so if you have a ruler you can literally do this and it's going to hold these three in place 
so I have two rulers so basically we're just going to jam that and then we know we want one to hold these two in place here so we'll put something over that side in a moment but basically this is pretty much all we're going to do we're going to pour the wax in and then we're going to let it set but as I said we want this to set first we're not going to use this um, now and now all we can do is take this off pull away you know this little bit here you can keep that for next time and um, like I said, we're going to let the two jars sit here and dry out. This one here, we are going to be using a double wick. So now the wicks I'm going to be using are the same. They're 7.5. So I need two of these for this diameter. So now we've got this one here. We're literally going to place two in the middle here, one to either side. There's like a little mini circle in the middle and one to either side of the circle. And then we're going to put our wick clip on in a minute um, with this particular one. So the 400 gram candles, I think um, I think this is called a Sienna jar actually from Pure Candle Supplies. They're my most favorite um, jars. I love them. I love the shape of them. I usually use white, but if I'm doing something like this, I'll do a clear one. And you can see the wicks in here. So now what we're going to do is just put a little um, wick clip which just sits like this you have to be super careful that you don't get any sprinkles under it because otherwise it won't stick push it down with some scissors or the end of a pen or whatever however you put them down and now let's be a bit more gentle than I was before and I like to leave this in to show everyone that even though I'm a candle maker, I make mistakes just like everyone else. So please don't think that I don't make mistakes. I definitely do. We're all human. Uh, so there you go. It is stuck in there, isn't it? It's ready to go. So now we will leave these, like I said, for about 12 hours to dry. And then I'll bring you back when we're just going to pour it in. And you can see how beautiful they're going to be. <coughs> It is the next day everybody and of course we have finished making the jars we've set them aside so now here we are at obviously you know my candle area so on top of here I do have my uh, jug and we're going to be putting the wax in so let's just tear out the scale so now the scales torn out which means it's not measuring anything that's sitting on it now inside my little um you know slow cooker which is to the side I'm literally just going to get you know the amount of wax that I actually need so literally I just use one of these scoops and I know I'm going to have somebody say oh my goodness that is such a long process but you know what uh, this is going to sound really silly I actually find this calming <laughs> I mean I know some people will go oh my goodness that's not calming but I personally find it calming I mean I could easily just pick this up because this is actually not that hot to hold so I can definitely hold it um, or I can put the jug close up but I don't really care this like I said this is just I actually find this calming and when I'm making candles I actually spend quite a lot of time just you know kind of just in here enjoying the process so for anyone new to small business I would say to you if you enjoy the process you're going to actually really like it more like I could not be making the amount of candles or soap I make if I didn't like it um, so yeah so definitely before you start a business everyone I would really just encourage you to get you know get a tester kit or just a really small amount of wax and fragrance to see if you even like the process because um, one of my daughters as many of you know have uh, she actually has an earring business that's quite successful she actually tried her hand at candles and she said to me mum I hate it she really didn't enjoy it because she felt that it was slow the process wasn't fast and as she said making earrings you make a lot more money so she actually went back to earrings um, not that she was ever going to give them up but she just thought look I'll try candles and 
she said to me oh mum I can't believe the amount of work you do for candles she just didn't realize buying a candle um the amount of work testing the patience that you got to have waiting for it to cool to the right temperature and all of this kind of thing so anyway I just thought I would add that in now today we are using um, a coconut soy of course that's the one that I choose to use now I have measured out my waxes so I'll tell you what we're going to use in this one we need one four five six grams so that's one thousand four hundred and fifty six grams of wax and then I will also tell you um, the fragrance load that we need and let's just hold our fingers close and hope we can fit everything in here. I think we can. I think it'll be fine. We are almost there. And like I said, I know someone's going to say, oh my goodness, well, you know, you could have done it a faster way. 100% I could. And I'm hoping in the new year to be able to buy one of those beautiful white mac um, melters. I really want the one from Luxury Candle Supplies. I've wanted it for a while, but, you know, I just honestly couldn't afford it. So, because making all this and getting to the stage I've got to, honestly, it costs money. Um, you know, you don't get here with no money. So... Um, and I've had to like pretty much invest everything back into what I'm doing. So, all right, there we go. So one, four, five, six. Um, and usually I'm going to tell everyone, well, usually when I do this, um, I actually add a tiny bit more. And the reason I do add a little bit more, um, I usually add, you know, a couple grams more or something just in case I was ever wrong or the scale's wrong because I'd rather have too much wax um, than too much fragrance because if you put too much fragrance then you've got an issue so anyway we've got that on there now we're going to I can even feel by the um, just feel the touch it's too hot but obviously we want to use our um, infrared which this is my infrared I know it's looking very gruddy and I've tried to clean this I can't get this red dye off the side of it but anyway so we're going to let that cool down to the right temperature now this temperature on this one here usually you're going to put the fragrance in around 50 to 52 degrees that's generally I usually put mine at about 52 53 degrees roughly um, and that's Celsius of course I have done videos where I've also listed Fahrenheit but please look in the description and I will actually put down the Fahrenheit um, as well as um, obviously you know the Celsius because in Australia we use Celsius so now we're not going to put a color in this I wanted just to keep this white but if you wanted to put a color this would be the time that you're going to add that in so now like I said we have actually done everything for that once it reaches the temperature we want it to reach then we are going to put the fragrance oil in now as I said earlier this is for uh, my uh, son's girlfriend Alicia and she loves really fun kind of fruities and you know really sweet scents so I'm going to do one that has like um, a couple different ones of birthday watermelons and uh, so on so anyway I will get all of that fragrance organized and then we're going to come back when this is at the right temperature all right, so it's at the right temperature. It's at 52 degrees at the moment. So let's just add in our fragrance. So I'm going to start by adding in some bubble gum. And I'm sorry, you can hear my little dog actually barking in the background. So now I've torn the scale out because remember, I want to add a few different ones in and we want to add in up to 144 grams because I'm working on a 9% fragrance load for this one. So like I said, let's first start with the bubble gum. And if you're doing lots of different scents, this is literally all you're going to do. You're just going to record what you're putting in um, just to make sure it's what you want. So I'm going to use a majority of bubble gum. We're going to put a tiny bit of frangipani, not too much, just a little bit. Frangipani does often make, um, you know, the uh, wax turn a yellowy colour from my um that's just from what i'm i've sort of seen but these ones all have vanilla so they will turn the fragrance uh sorry the wax a funny color in time so like i said we need one four five six and you don't want to go over with fragrances because if you do um like we've gone over one that's okay and that's why i added the extra um you know remember the extra wax in it just in case i did that 
so now you can stir it with whatever you want I personally like to use just a little chopstick or a kebab stick um, and just stir it a little bit not too much because you don't want to have too many air bubbles or anything crazy in it and um, basically we're just going to give it a stir for one or two minutes and that's so that these um, so that the fragrance oils can actually bind to the wax molecules because um, wax actually has little molecules and if you actually add the fragrance in too late it means that it's not hot enough for it actually to bind properly so that's really important and I didn't understand all that when I first started I honestly thought you heat up the wax throw in the fragrance and then pour it like I had no idea about waiting or anything like that until I watched so many different YouTube um, channels and there's so many really good ones that you can watch you've probably heard of Jeff Stanley he's very good I also like um, Black Tie Barn which is Wade um, also Erica from Memory Candle Co she's very good as well and um, there's just so many things out there and so many people that you can actually get information from so if you're new I definitely suggest watch lots of different candle makers get some tips some tricks and we all know different things but you know a disclaimer I will definitely say none of us know everything we all learn things all the time um, but you know just have fun I mean that's all it's all about and I wish you were here to smell this because this smells delish I mean just that tiny bit that tiny little bit um, of the frangipani was really good and while we're here because obviously that's not the right temperature yet I'll show you what I've actually used. So I've used this bubblegum one from Aussie Candle Supplies and I can tell you this is the nicest bubblegum I've ever used. It smells like a real 1980s kind of uh, bubblegum like hubba bubba is what it reminds me of and then I've used this one from pure candles it's called birthday cake it just smells like a vanilla sort of like a french vanilla sponge cake but it's really nice and creamy kind of scent and then I have used this one from Aussie candles which is frangipani and this is the favorite frangipani I like now if you're making soap please be careful because a lot of frangipanis cannot be used in soap they're good for candles but not soap so that is really important um, you know just to note and I'm just going to check my um, temperatures here and no it's still too high so we're going to leave this just for a minute I'll bring you back when it's the right one and then we're just literally going to go and pour it straight into our candle jar so now our wax is ready everyone it is at 43 degrees now one thing that you will notice when you actually see the wax is you'll notice it looks really cloudy and then you will know that's right can you see how cloudy that is so we're going to pour it in basically I've just put the rulers to hold this in place so and I don't need to weigh this because it's for a gift uh, if it was not for a gift I definitely suggest that you weigh it um, and obviously I have been keep mixing this for quite some time um, don't rush pouring it in just do it really nice and slow um, and you will notice sometimes with it getting to this temperature that it's like really cloudy and almost white and you might sort of panic a bit and think oh no it's you know like um, it's setting up too fast but please don't worry about that it's fine and now we're just going to you know pour it over the um, line of the sprinkles because I want um, it to sort of be right close to the top if we can and it's almost there and then we'll fix up all the wicks so you can see it is gone to the top now we will let it set and this is the hardest bit doing something like this is the wicks but if you get a ruler or something and just basically hold them up um, that way and you can see I've got some kebab sticks and we can put some the other way to sort of hold them in place I mean this is just a, a, a paintbrush the same thing you know if you can see that they're moving but you don't need to worry you can see those wicks are going to be fine obviously we're going to snip them off when they're ready and the good thing is because this wax is you know it gets um, thick really fast it will actually hold up um, the sticks now you can see as we've been talking around the edge it's already started to go white and that's what I mean you really need this particular wax to be at the right temperature if you you know if you actually start to do this and you're pouring it at 50 it's just too hot 
the tops will be really ugly it just won't be nice so before um, I do anything else we're going to leave this I'll bring you back and I'm going to show you what it looks like before I heat the top so that you can see how smooth it's going to be I mean most waxes honestly you do need to go over the top and make them smooth but this one um, look sometimes you might see a tiny rough bit but generally it's very smooth so like I said we're just going to leave this for a couple hours then I'll come back and we will remove everything and we'll see how it's set up but at the moment I'm really happy with it I think it looks quite good um, and like I said you know just move this if you want that wick to be a little bit um, straight up then just move that but it's fine we've got the five and we know this is going to work and get a great um, melt pool at the end so anyway like I said we're going to leave this for now and I will bring you back soon now it has been a couple hours everyone and I really wanted to show you without me pulling all of these off so we'll do this one from scratch so that you could see exactly how smooth you can actually get this coconut soy so let's just remove everything away and honestly I have not touched anything at all I've left it so I haven't even seen it but pouring at the low temperature can you see how beautiful and smooth this is if I get up nice and close as well and that's what I wanted to show you so this sort of wax is one that needs the exact temperature so don't rush it just make sure that you really are doing it like I said the way that um, I suggested on it so so now all we're going to do is cut these so let me just go and get my um, little clippers and we will cut this now for anyone that doesn't know these are actually um, wick cut cutters so you can see it's got like a little scissors and then basically you just hold it over so that you can get you know the right size that we want and snip them off now with candles um, can I tell you you don't need a big wick you only need something small like this if you make it too big it like will mushroom down and everything else so you know you really want it quite low um, and I've seen lots of them high and I used to do them high because I thought they were meant to be high but they're actually not they're meant to be quite low because otherwise like I said it will mushroom over the top when it kind of burns so this is better and you want to tell people to try and snip them even if they just snip it with a pair of scissors so I always do this one then you can go back and trim them to whatever size you want but I mean look how beautiful and thin this looks and look how gorgeous and smooth it is like just beautiful so now that we've done that the next thing we're going to do is we are going to be looking at what we actually need to pop on the top so remember I said I wanted this to be colorful and fun now there's a bit of a trick to all this everyone one thing to think about is can you see that there's only like a centimeter here we've left so we don't want to pile this up with so much that when it burns it goes over the top so you've just got to think of what you actually want to put on there before we heat it up so for instance if I wanted to put this little macaroon on I would sort of go okay that looks okay there or whatever but I'm not going to put those ones on I have actually made some really cute little um, Santa ones in pink so I'm just going to put a little a couple of these um just like this because like I said this is actually for my son's partner and I know that she will sort of see these colors and she'll just love the color so I'm just really going to pop on a few different colored ones that I've made um and just you know I'm just going to make it look like a little bit of a, a candy one so if you put them there first so you know where they want to go and then obviously take them off um and then we're going to use the heat gun to heat it all down so that we can just stick them on top so let's get the heat gun we'll get these off we know we basically want those ones on so I'll put these to the side um, and then we are going to make it look gorgeous but doesn't it look lovely I hope you love it because I think it looks just beautiful so I've got my heat gun I'm going to go over the top now one thing I was going to say is if you um, didn't want to put anything on you could probably leave this you wouldn't even need to um, put the heat gun over the top but we're going to do this and then basically once all of the well just the top layer is a little bit liquidy it will uh, you know sort of be like a glue and then of course we can pop the pieces on so just really slowly um, just go over the top you know and we want to make sure that it is a bit of a liquid pool 
Now don't go adding the other bits on until we actually make this the way we want, otherwise you will melt those colours. And hopefully you can kind of see it melting on top and um, you know if there's any rough edges this is where you try and smooth the edges out a little bit. And I can see that there's like a liquidy pool in the top. So I'm happy with that. So now I'm literally just going to get these and just pop them on exactly how I want them to sit. Um, and it's just, this is just the fun bit of doing it however you like it. Don't feel pressured by any other person or any other soap maker or anything that you see. Just make them however you want because it's your little design, no one else's. And I think that looks quite sweet. I don't want to put too many. Now, can you see how this is kind of melted around the outside? It's only because this was very liquidy and I probably should have waited a bit longer. But like I said, it doesn't matter. It's just this one's a bit of fun and I know Alicia will love it. I know she'll think this is just adorable. Um, and as I said, this is just going to be something a little bit special for her. Now, once you've done this, we can put some biodegradable glitter on the top. So I'm just going to grab some of that. Now, I am going to use some of this. I mean, doesn't this look beautiful? It's like a holographic sort of glitter. This one was from Sud Off. Um, I get all my glitters, micas, uh, colorants from them because their service is amazing and the colors are just beautiful. I mean, look how sparkly that is. And I guarantee you that this is not showing you how sparkly and beautiful it is. Now, make sure you're light-handed with the glitter because if you put too much, um, I promise you, candles do not love too much glitter and it can actually cause um, the wicks to clog up so we don't want that we just want a little bit of glitter we just want it to look a little bit pretty so I'm just you know sprinkling on a paintbrush and then tapping the end of the brush just to go along the top we'll just do one tiny bit more so literally that's all I've got on the end of the brush that I'm tapping if you can um, see that so that is it for Alicia's one now let's have a close-up I'll bring you closer so you can actually see now doesn't that look so so pretty so once all of this like I said dries down a bit um, it will look gorgeous and it will be ready for me to wrap it up for Alicia so I hope you have loved this video everybody uh, and these particular bowls um, you can actually get them from pure candle supplies that's where I've got this one from I'll pop all the links down below and make sure you give me a huge thumbs up if you love this video and don't forget to push on the subscribe and notification so that you'll know when my super fun videos come up and I will see you on the next video. Bye everyone!